Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write a robot program using our Python API. Now, if you don't have access to the Modeling tab, you can use a Python add-on or a .NET API add-on to complete this tutorial. To get started, let's add a robot to the 3D world. I'll go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, Expand Robots, scroll down, click Visual Components, then add a generic articulated robot to the 3D world. So you can see it here. Let's now go to the Modeling tab, and I have that robot component selected here. I'll now go to the Behavior group and click the Behavior zero. And under Miscellaneous, I'm going to click Python script to add that behavior. This will open the script editor for me. Let's now go to the Program tab. And since we have the robot selected, we can see its program here in the Program editor panel. So it has a main routine, but nothing else. So we're going to use this Python script to add some statements and routines to our program. So we don't need these lines of code here. And let me make the text in the script editor a bit bigger for you. Let's first get a handle for the component containing this script, so get component. And we're going to be doing the same thing we did in the previous video, so let's get a handle for the robot executor, which controls the robot program. That's executed during the simulation, so we'll say component.findBehaviors by type. And the type we're looking for is R robot executor, and we'll get that first executor from that list. And now let's get a handle for the robot program. So we'll use the robot executor object with that property called program. And let's start by adding a statement to the main routine. So we'll say main routine equals robot program dot main routine. And now our statement, let's make a variable for it. We'll use the main routine, so a VC routine object with this method called add statement. So this allows you to add a statement of a given type and then it returns that statement that you created. So the type we want to create is called VC statement underscore and let's create a print statement first. And this will return a statement of this type to this variable. And statements do have common properties but they also have unique properties so a print statement has a message property that is the message you want to print out. So let's say statement.message equals hello world. And if we compile the code, we can now see that print statement added to the main routine listed here. Let's now add a delay statement. So we'll delay the robot program and then print out the statement. So let's do this. Let's say statement equals, and we're still using the main routine with that method of add statement. And this time the type is vc underscore statement underscore delay. And you also have an optional argument here where you can basically list where you want the statement to be added in that routine that's using this method. So we know we want the delay statement to happen before our print statement, so we'll give it an index of zero. Otherwise, it will just be the statement will be added uh, to the end of the routine statements list. And then for this delay statement, it has a unique property of delay, and we'll set this equal to be two seconds, so a real value. Let's compile the code. And notice there's our delay statement, and it's added to the start, or the, at first, statement in the main routine. But something also happened. We added another print statement. So in order to fix this, what we can do, we can clear the statements of a routine. So I'll say main routine dot clear. So this will remove all the statements from this routine calling this method. So if I now compile the code again, notice we just have those two statements now. Let's now add a motion statement. So after we print hello world, let's go somewhere. So I'll say, we'll make the robot go somewhere. We're not going on any magical cloud ride in the sky. So we'll say main routine add statement. And let's create a point to point motion statement. So it's going to be VC underscore statement. And if you want to know what type of uh, statement constants to use, you can look in the help file under the Python API reference. This is going to be a PT motion, P2P motion. And let's just add it to the end of the statements list. So we're not going to use that optional argument, which we used here. Let's then return this, and I do want to show you one thing about a motion statement. It has a property called positions. So whenever you add a linear motion or a point-to-point -point motion, there's already going to be a position added for you in the statement, which you can then edit yourself. So if I compile the code, there's our point-to-point -point motion statement. And you can see here are the positions listed for that motion statement. So it has one position frame already. So if we now look at the robot, let's collapse the script editor and select that point-to-point -point motion statement, you can see it's very outside the reach of the robot. So it's listed down here 
because we're not using any base frame or tool frame, so it's actually referencing probably the, the robot world coordinate system, or that robot world frame. And what we can do now, let's go back to our script and reset our simulation so our robot's you know not down on the floor. And now let's edit that statement. And what I'll do is I'll say position equals statement dot positions, and this is a list, so I'm going to get the first position that was added when I created the statement. Now let's use its position matrix, and it has two, so it can use a position matrix by referencing a base frame or its absolute location in the 3D world, so we'll say position matrix equals position dot position in world. Otherwise, it, I think it's actually called position in reference, that other position matrix. But we're using the world position or the absolute position. And if we print that out, let's see what it get. Compile the code. And the output panel, yep, you can see it's a VC matrix object. So now, to manipulate where that position is located, we can manipulate the matrix. So let's say position matrix. Let's translate it relative to where it is right now in the 3D world. So we're not giving it absolute coordinates, just position relative to its current location. And let's move it along the x-axis, 1,000. We don't need to move it along the y. And let's also move it up 1,000 along the z-axis. And now, in order for this position matrix, the updated one, to be applied to the position, we have to assign it back. So we first get the position matrix, edit it, and now we're going to assign it back. So we'll say position.position .position in world equals that position matrix. So if we compile the code, and if we look now look at the robot, click that P1 position again, notice it's now listed here. But we have another issue. Notice the orientation of the robot. So we probably don't want the robot pointing this direction along the z-axis. We probably want it pointing down. So let's fix that. Let's go back to our script. and. Before we assign back the position matrix, let's rotate that position matrix around the y-axis. So I'll say position matrix dot rotate relative to the y-axis, and let's give it 180 degrees. So let's compile the code, go back to position one, and notice, yep, now that robot has that correct orientation. And since we're on the subject of positions, let's get a bit fancy and make the robot pick up a cube. So let's go back to the Home tab. And in our eCatalog panel, under Models by Type, let's click Products and Containers and do a search for a cube. And you should find this item here, so drag it into the 3D world. Just make sure it's within reach of the robot. And now for that position one, let's actually make it the face center here, this top face center of the cube. So we'll go back to the our script which is listed down there. Let's go to our program tab so we can see the program. And now, let's say, instead of doing this, let's actually keep that and just comment it out for future reference. Let's say that, in this case, we're getting the position matrix of the cube in the 3D world. So I'll get the application object. So get application. This method is coming from VC script, which we imported here. Now let's find that cube. So cube equals app dot find component. And the name of the component I already know it's called cube. And now let's say it's position matrix. This variable is equal to the cube's position matrix in the 3D world. So we don't need this line of code here. So let's comment that out. And now we can manipulate it however we want to. Now this will give the origin most likely of this cube. So if we now compile the code take a look at where the position is now, you can see it's all the way down here, so we need to move it to the top face center here. And we can do that by using the vectors from this component itself. So this would be very helpful if you need to teach the robot to pick and place apart. Let's now say that the cube center is equal to the cube.bound diagonal. So this is using the bound box for this node, or the root node of the component, and it's giving us this I'm sorry, the, that's the bound diagonal. We want the bound center. So it's giving us a center point of a bound box encompassing the cube's geometry. And now we can use that to our benefit. Let's say position matrix dot translate relative to its current location. And we're going to be using that cube center. 
So we'll say cube center dot x because this is returning a vector. So now the vector will be going from the position matrix. So cube underscore center the x coordinate cube underscore center the y coordinate the vector and in this case to make it be on the top of the cube we're going to times its center z position by 2. So cube center times 2. And let's make the script editor just a bit bigger so we can see it. There we go. And now before we give it to the position in world remember what we did here we had to rotate that y-axis so let's use this line of code here I'll just copy it and then insert that right here so after we move the matrix let's then rotate it and then assign it to that motion statement or the position of our motion statement so let's compile the code didn't get any errors in the output panel so so far so so good and now when we click P1 we can see the position now is updated here and that's what we wanted so what you could do now you could add a set binary output statement to the robots program to signal the grasp action and then add other motion statements to you know approach the cube and lift the cube up when you pick it but I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video you can do that on your own but we do want to know how to add a subroutine to this robot program so to do that let's use the main program or sorry the robot program to add a new routine so I'll say subroutine equals robot program dot add routine and in this case that should be fine but we have to give it a name so let's just call that new routine example and then when we compile the code there's that new subroutine called example so let's say let's create a new motion statement in that subroutine but we're not using that main routine anymore we need to use this subroutine we just created so subroutine add statement statement position and in this case we don't need to make any changes let's just assign it that position matrix we were manipulating here so we'll say position dot position in world equals that position matrix so if I now compile the code we can see that we got some errors here so line 32 aha yes sorry we're adding a routine of this name but since there's already a routine in the robot program notice it doesn't let you add it there so if we change this to be example 2 we have a subroutine here this should work out and yep there you go so now we have a new subroutine called example 2 that has that motion statement and if we click that motion statement you can see that it's still underneath there so we made some mistake let's go back to our script and we misspelled something. Well, I misspelled something, sorry. So let's clear our output panel and compile the code again. And we get the same issue again where we were trying to add a statement to a routine that already existed. So instead of using the add routine, this is what I'm getting at, we'll first try to find the subroutine. So subroutine equals robot program dot find routine. In this case, the name will be example two. And if we have the routine, everything's so far so good. We don't want to add any more statements, so what we'll do is say if we have a subroutine of that given name, let's clear its statements. So subroutine.clear. And then we have to check if not subroutine, then we'll create a new one of that name. So since we already know that this routine exists in the robot program it's just going to do this line of code here it won't create a new one and then we want to add that statement of our point to point motion and then set its position matrix to be where we already set it here so if we compile the code again look at our output panel I think we got an error again no we didn't if I click position 2 here close out the script you can see yep there we go now the robots at that point on the top face center of the cube and this is a motion statement this position that we set up for the position in our main routine as well now we have two subroutines in the robot program so we probably don't need this example subroutine so let's go back to our script and delete it so in this case let's add to our script let's say the robot program so robot program dot delete routine and give it the name 
of example. So let's compile the code. And I made another mistake here. I apologize. Uh, instead of actually giving the name of the subroutine, you have to give the routine object. So if we go back to our script, you can see here I was giving the name of that subroutine, but you need to give the routine object. So an easy way, instead of deleting all these routines at the end of our script, let's delete them in the beginning. So we're first clearing all the statements in our main routine. Let's then say for subroutine, in the robot program dot routines property which will give us a list back of all the subroutines in the robot program let's do robot program dot delete routine and we'll give it that subroutine object so what this is going to do it will clear the statements in the main routine it will then remove all the subroutines in that robot program and notice down here we're eventually going to create that subroutine called example2 and let's actually delete that and just make it example and if the subroutine does exist we're just going to clear its statements if it does not we're going to create a new one and then add a position a motion statement to that routine so if we compile the code and go to the program editor panel we can see it worked so we have a main routine that has these statements and this time only one subroutine called example which has this motion statement now, if you want to add a statement that has a scope, for example, a while statement or an if statement, it's the same process. You first create the statement and then use its unique properties. So this if statement and while statement, they will have a scopes property, and you can just add statements using that scope. Another thing I did not cover in this video is a path statement or a process statement, which allows you to add multiple positions for a motion statement. But I will cover those in another video tutorial. All right, this ends the video. If you have any more questions, you can go to our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com, and I hope you have a wonderful day.